Well, if you curve the top part of an aeroplane wing, it'll fly a lot better. But some of them will fly without the curve. And so will gliders, especially those that you can make. In fact, these are very simple, but they're very hard at the same time. It's hard to get them to work properly, but they're simple to make. The basis of them is nothing more than a matchstick. And it's a very good base because that's the fuselage or body of the glider, and it's got a weight at the front, which is the head of the match. Well, for the rest of it, you need writing paper, glue, and scissors, and a lot of patience. But let's see how we would begin. First of all, the match, as well as being the fuselage, is the measure. And if you take a piece of uh, ordinary paper, this is writing paper thickness, and fold it so that two, edge are exactly, two edges are exactly aligned like that, we can think of the fold as being the spine. And if we take the matchstick and measure about, well, measure along the spine and take about a third of the distance of the match and make a mark, we can then come around to the two edges, which are aligned, and take about one and a half the distance of the match and we then make some cuts. In fact, you cut in from the one and a half mark and you cut in from the spine. And you do it in a slight slope so that you get a piece of paper which, when it's opened out, will make two aeroplane or glider wings like that. You see there's a slight slope on the front there. We'll put that to one side because the next bit is the fiddly one. You come down to the edge of where you've just cut and make another cut so that you make a piece of paper about three times the thickness of a match. Again, with a spine in the middle. Chop it off out here somewhere so you have lots of working room. And this is fiddly because what you have to do is to pinch the spine and fold the two legs back, one like that and the other in exactly the same place like that. You'll end up with a sort of a zigzag. But you want the two legs, in fact, to be no longer than the squeezed bit in the middle. So if you fold them together, you can get the scissors and cut them off to exactly the same length by doing this. Chop. And that's going to be, you can see, the zigzag that crimps together to make the tail plane. It's fiddly, but it's possible to do. Well, that's really all you need, except for the glue, because you assemble it like this. You put the matchstick down, you glue the tailpiece together, and you stick it on right on the back of the match like that. And then you get the wings with the sloping part forward. You glue the fold or the spine down on the match like that. And they shouldn't come more than halfway up the match. And that should be your glider. I say should be because the chances are the first one you make won't work. It'll probably do something like this. Let's have a go. Well, it sort of flew. In fact, it's just landed now. It wasn't too bad, but it went down fairly fast. So these are the things you probably want to change. First of all, fold the wings upwards so they make a V. That gives it stability. Secondly, if it tends to plummet a lot, fold the back of the wings up. Aeroplanes really do have controls like this. They're called flaps. If you push one up on one side, it'll make the aeroplane turn to that side. And if you push them up on both sides, they'll make the aeroplane scoop up in the air and then come down again. Let's see what that one does. I think I've been a bit crude. Hmm, it went into a spiral. Still, if you get it right, it shouldn't be too bad at all. That one, you can see, has got a reasonable V in it. The backs of the wings are hardly turned up at all, and the wings themselves are not so long that they flop. And notice about a third to a half of the matchstick is poking out in front of the wings. Well, with all of that, it ought to work well if I don't throw it too hard. So let's give it a go.